So as all of you should know, we have an election coming up here in about three months, almost exactly to the day. And we have some changing currents in this current election that is so pervasive and is so profound that I need to really address it today. And so let's get right into the stats. So first, we must look at the presidential election when it comes down to a Biden versus Harris or sorry, a Trump versus Harris head to head election. First and foremost, we have to also understand that Trump's lead in my last upload about 10 days ago was where Trump was leading by about two percentage points. Trump is all of a sudden down to 0.4 percent in the lead and the popular vote. Now, this seems like an utter disaster for Donald Trump, but there's two to three major things that might change your mind. So the first one I'm going to address today is going to have to do with the fact that Kamala Harris experiencing a sugar high well what does that mean folks Kamala Harris is on now day 15 of not holding an interview or any sort of speech that was long form that is not use a teleprompter well what does that mean aside from the Fox News sort of like uh, lower third that'll say Kamala Harris is not a, uh, reporting the duty truth is is that the American layperson and the independent voter will notice that Donald Trump is out here doing interviews with Aiden Ross XQC God knows half of the people in the Rust Belt don't even know who these people are but goddamn do they know that Donald Trump is at least hauling ass over in that direction to talk to the voters whereas Kamala Harris is doing the last thing to that which is just to kind of maybe every other day do some small little token teleprompter led uh, speech which nobody really viscerally connects with and so anyhow um, with that being said it shows an undercurrent that maybe while Harris is trending up in the polls and may show that it's not sustainable because obviously if your candidate is not really out there doing speeches or whatever have you then it shows that it's uh, maybe um, just more so of like an optimistic thing like oh please can Trump lose but less so okay Kamala you're a great person you're a great politician it doesn't seem that way you know would you see uh president obama uh taking 15 days without an interview would you see president clinton do the same ronald reagan you go down the list most presidents would be more active and the nominee harris is totally not really in the spotlight which maybe shows a lack of confidence in what's going on here but the basic premise for the kamala harris campaign is ostensibly that uh you know clearly she's getting closer in the polls as compared to where biden was even before uh the debate showed a salinity the point being in the, uh though is that while Trump is losing by 0.4 or sorry is at only 0.4 of an advantage in the popular vote it's obvious that he is still likely to win the election and I'm going to prove to you as to why that is the case I've repeated this for months in a row but for the new viewers like and subscribe first and foremost but second of all while Trump may only tie in the popular vote you have to understand that Joe Biden won the popular vote allegedly by about 4.5 percentage points in 2020 Trump was within about 48,000 votes from actually winning the election outright and the Electoral College. Now, what that basically means for you guys at home is that Trump would have to be losing in the polls right here by like five percentage points for him to be almost guaranteed to lose. And so Trump winning the popular vote at all means that he's probably at a two thirds odds of winning the election, probably. Now, the different calculus in this election that has been more and more solidified over time is that the states that could have been in contest before when Biden was completely in free fall are really not so much in uh, shock and not so much in question nowadays. So, for example, New Jersey is deep blue because, as I said before, the states that are basically the ones that, again, a lot of even Democrats were like, okay, Jesus Christ, like, is this our nominee? Now, at least Kamala Harris is 60 years old. She is cognizant of what's going on. You could say she talks like she fell out of a coconut tree, but at least she's not uh, addled with dementia yet. Anyhow, so what that basically means for you guys at home is that Colorado is probably blue. New Mexico is probably blue. Virginia is also probably blue. Minnesota is also probably blue because, again, Biden won, these, Biden won them by a ton. And I think that any state that Biden won by more than five will likely stay to Harris. This includes New Hampshire. It includes Maine at large that he won by like nine percentage points. It also includes Nebraska's second district, which has been trending off of a cliff towards the Democratic Party ever since Romney uh, in 2012. So right now, Harris is leading Trump in Vance, actually, by seven electoral vo vo uh, votes. And this is before we encounter a VP candidate uh, that she may pick any day now that might or might not be an incumbent for the Republican ticket. It could be somebody strong and potent and popular in the Keystone State like Pennsylvania that the election ostensibly runs through. Or it could be in another candidate that is actually pretty strong, whether that be Andy Bashir, who gives uh, purple kind of swing voter bona fides in a state such as Kentucky or God knows who else, uh, Mark Kelly as well, my senator out of Arizona. The point being is that things could get even worse for Donald Trump, but let's encounter the polls for what they are. 
so starting with the swing states, we're going to start off with the state of Arizona. Um, this state was actually going about five or so points for Donald Trump against Biden a month or so ago. Uh, it's been tightening, obviously. And if we get Mark Kelly in there, it's going to be a disaster, maybe for the Republicans. But as of right now, Trump is leading the aggregate uh, as of the past two weeks for about, I think the percentage here is close enough to three that I can just call it there. So Trump is leading in the state of Arizona. He lost the state in 2020 by about 0.3 percentage points so as close as you could even fathom a state being that being said he seems to be in the lead here and this is one of the states he definitely needs to win if he wants to flip the electoral result but moving on to the next state nevada ought to be a twin insofar as odds are that both of them will vote the same way arizona and nevada so the casino state is clearly uh towards trump again the polling is not as plentiful as uh arizona but i i mean he's still leading by four so trump is likely to win this state as well also, keep in mind the targeting of the election propaganda. Again, Trump is saying, I will not tax your tips, which is outsized uh, support towards, again, the service industry, again, uh, for waiters and for people that work in the service industry that is predominant in Vegas, in the biggest city of the state of Nevada. And so while this policy would be popular anywhere, obviously there's an outsized amount of people that would benefit in this case by the, uh, the Nevada constituency. And so I think that Nevada probably has a better chance of being Republican than Arizona, which is somewhat tragic because again, Arizona has like double the electoral votes, but Anyway, they should be voting in line with each other, to be completely clear. North Carolina is another state that I actually made the argument should not even be a swing state on this website because, obviously, Trump was beating Biden by, like, seven percentage points last month in North Carolina. Seemingly, the black turnout has been pretty impressive for Kamala Harris. Again, this is over online polls and not necessarily uh, brass tacks. Okay, well, who's actually going to be bust to the polls? Who will walk their way into the polls? It's a different question altogether. That being said, though, when it comes to black women, a coalition that was so strong for somebody like Barack uh, Hussein Obama, uh, you can see that these people will likely vote more so for Harris than they would have done otherwise for Biden. Obviously, the question is, will you take a white guy in Trump and then somebody who's at least a brown like Kamala versus two old white guys like Harris? I mean, sorry, Biden versus Trump. And so, I mean, with that being said, it seems kind of clear that black people might vote more Democrat, not necessarily by percentage, but more so just more of them turning out which typically is a bad thing for the Republican Party. And so it might make North Carolina closer. That being said, as of right now, Trump is leading Harris by 5.5 percentage points, which is a pretty dominant showing. Uh, again, the black vote, despite being pretty vital in a lot of these swing states, it is not the end all be all. In fact, 1% of the white vote in these swing states is equal to maybe three or four percentage points of the black vote, obviously, because black people make up maybe 20% of uh, North Carolina. And so again, the white vote matters a lot more proportionately when you do it as a percentage because obviously there's more white people. And so it just depends how that shakes out. You can see Harris having more popular vote support because minorities support her more through identity politics and whatever else. But when it comes to the white people, her record as being the most liberal senator, which is somewhat hard to believe, is totally going to drive the middle class whites apart from her like the Red Sea thousands of years ago. And so I think North Carolina will confidently be in the Trump column going forward. Even Romney won it, by the way. Now, at least I hope I'm right about that, because if not, I'm an idiot. But OK, Georgia is another state that is pretty vital for him to win. Uh, Georgia is a prerequisite. OK, in 95 percent of scenarios, if Trump wins the election, he's winning Georgia. Well, let's see how that state goes, because, again, it was really solidly Republican when he was pulling against Biden. But this black support seems to be an issue. Again, in 2020, black turnout was through the roof, which a lot of people can call into doubt, obviously, like, OK, you think. Uh, all these guys just drop the basketball and are like, okay, we're going to vote for Biden. I doubt it. I wouldn't do that. So, you know, but okay, Kamala, you know, a little more inspirational. Barack was cool at least, but okay, let's see how the black vote in general uh, participates in this notion of a uh, turnout surge in particularly in Gwinnett County and whatever have you. Okay, so right now, Trump is leading Harris by 0.8. We have several polls where only Kamala ties at one and wins it by one in PPP, which seems to be a Democratic uh, funded pollster given the uh, the signage here. Anyway, Trump is still leading Georgia, although the lead is a lot narrower than you would have expected as of the last several weeks. And so this might be in, uh, in question, you know, much like 2020, you know, a lot of people said, well, let's focus the money on Pennsylvania, Michigan, Wisconsin. And they were right. A lot of people low key said, OK, people like radical politics is like, OK, well, actually him going to Rome, Georgia in October 2020. These things is actually pertinent because Georgia might be a slight, you know, very close, close fought state. And he was actually completely correct here. And so Georgia might be more competitive than what we give it credit for. In fact, 
where uh, last month we saw Arizona, Nevada, and Georgia be within about a percentage point of each other being very solidly Republican swing states. You notice now that Nevada and, and uh, Arizona are pretty resolute in the Trump uh, camp, but Georgia might be more in question, again, because of the minority population. Now, again, there's a big uh, separation in golf, presumably, between black people saying, well, okay, I'm going to vote for one of my kind versus, okay, we'll actually go and make the effort to go to a chapel and vote. I just doubt it, but we'll see how this plays out in the future. Again, three months out from the election. So moving on, we're going to go to Pennsylvania, which might be the most favorable of the three uh, Rust Belt states for Donald Trump. Again, you could debate it uh, very furiously because, again, uh, it's difficult to tell what state will be the most Republican out of all of them. But thus far in 2016 and 20, we saw that Kamala, sorry, that Trump did the worst in Michigan. And so we'll see Pennsylvania again. Josh Shapiro could throw a huge wrench in this, into this race, but as of right now, Trump is leading by 1.8 percentage points, which is basically an inversion of how much Biden won by over Trump, allegedly, in 2020. So Trump is leading Harris in the state of Pennsylvania by 1.8, even in the Democrat polls or Fox News polls, which though Fox News is nominally conservative, their polling firm is ran by a ton of liberals and is staffed by a ton of liberals. So with that being said, a tie is actually pretty good for Donald Trump. So yes, Donald Trump is leading the state of Pennsylvania by an aggregated basis of 1.8 percentage points. Moving on to the state of Michigan, though, this one is going to be pretty troubling, to be completely honest. You'll see the polling result. Harris is leading Trump by two. Now, keep in mind, there is a Bloomberg poll, which I might have uh, encountered in my last video. But basically, there's this one Bloomberg poll from 10 days ago that says that Harris is winning by 11, which, again, I do not believe for a second. You know, if Harris is winning Michigan by 11, she's going to easily win Wisconsin, Pennsylvania, Arizona, Nevada, Georgia, North Carolina, Florida, maybe. So the point being is that clearly the Bloomberg poll is completely, uh, completely out of whack. But since we're making a video on the latest polls and since some of you guys were complaining that, oh, God, you overrid the polls and it's like, bro, like, I know what I'm doing here. An outlier is an outlier. But OK, have your cliff nail of a poll. OK, fine. Harris winning by two. Have it. OK, fine. Sure. According to the aggregated latest polls, Harris is winning Michigan. Mia culpa. I don't know. Anyway, Wisconsin is the last state. Again, Trump is already winning 287 to 241. But let's get to the bottom of it. So Wisconsin is a state that has horrible polling. It's just all over the place. I don't know how they screw this up over the other two states that are contemporaries. That being said, Trump is still leading by 0.2 percentage points over Harris, which is a very, 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 very narrow margin for you guys to understand here. Uh, the margin of error in the average poll is anywhere from like three to four percent. And so to be up by 0.2 means literally nothing. I mean, it's like uh, it's like asking a super drunk person who's taller between a guy who's like five, seven or five, eight. I mean, he's bound to screw it up. OK, if one guy lunge, you know, one guy's like hunching over a little bit, he'd get the whole prognosis incorrect. And so to be up by 0.2 really means nothing in the polling uh, sector. But that being said, for now, we're going to give Trump the W, which makes sense. Just that obviously any people that are malcontent in the comments, just know that if you believe the polls at face value, you would have believed that Harris would win Michigan by 11, but then also lose Wisconsin by 0.2. Again, it literally does not make sense here. Um, historically, over the past several years, you'd understand that Michigan, Wisconsin, and Pennsylvania have all been within, have been within 3% of each other. So it's like expecting to have twin brothers where one twin is like a foot taller than the other. It just literally doesn't make sense. And so... With that being said, uh, Trump Vance wins this election by 297 electoral votes to the Kamala Harris 241. This is liable to change, of course, if and when she picks a vice president, which could happen by the time I upload this, in which case I'll look like an idiot dressed in beige. But uh, basically, Trump and Vance are in the driver's seat for a victory. It's their race to lose. There's a looming recession that could very well happen. And that would totally help the Republican Party. Again, that would suck for me. College students are having it rough right now. The point being, though, is that as of this second, Trump is leading in the latest polls. And so that's the update for you guys. And so I like the video. If you like the video, comment down below if you have any disagreements and if they're worth responding to, I will get to them. OK, liking and subscribing will make my day, baby. So why, why don't you just go ahead and do it? See you all on the next one. Uh, adios.